Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done a haul. Has it been a really long time? What have I been doing? I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to look back in my YouTube videos to see why it's feeling like I haven't done a hard goods haul in a long time. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and today we have a hard goods haul. Along with a few other items, you know me, normally for a hard goods haul, I throw in a couple of pairs of shoes and I have a feeling today is a special pair. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get going. Let's talk about hard goods and a few pairs of shoes I picked up. So recently, I have been just putting in my cart whatever I want to. Sometimes I do that with total abandonment. I just go up and down the aisles in the thrift store and I don't always check comps. I just put in the cart what I'm feeling to put in the cart. Not a good strategy if you're new to reselling or you don't have the capital to spend or you're not a long tail seller. If you're looking to flip items quick on any selling platform and you need your money back out quickly do not use this strategy for me I've been selling eight years full-time I have the capital and the space and boy do I have patience for things to sell but today I want to pick up this first item because how could you pass this by a dancing cat coat rack dog leash holder cat leash holder how adorably cute is this thing I feel like we should play some can-can music with the cats going back and forth on the screen. <laughs> All right, so I saw this sitting on the shelf. I paid $3.99 for it. Adorably, adorably cute, great shape. I don't think there's anything missing. I don't think there's any damage. Sometimes I do miss that. So just know if you're in the thrift store and you get home and one of your items has damage or even a couple happens to the best of us, do the best you can in the thrift store, but sometimes you get home and items have damage. I think this one is in great shape. Looks hand painted. And the thing I love, whiskers. These guys have real whiskers. So cute. All right, so what do I think this is gonna go for? I have no idea. It's listed in my eBay store. If I think of it, I'll put the screenshot on the screen. If I don't think of it or remember, you guys are gonna to have to go into my eBay store, Lavender Clothesline, and see what it's selling for. But that is item number one. It is made out of wood and does have the mounting hardware already on the back. So adorable, I love it. And that's why I put it in the cart. I did not run comps because I'm not even quite sure what to call this thing. All right, let's go on to item number two. Item number two, again, I did not run comps. I have sold these before. These are very well sought after. This is a vintage dough bowl. So look at the beauty of this thing, made from one piece of wood. So just gorgeous. Sometimes the artist or the company making them will have their names on the back. I have found many different brands. Sometimes it's burned in and sometimes it's just signed. This one is unsigned. Beautiful, beautiful bowl. I always say yes to wood bowls, but get especially excited when I can use dough bowl. D-O-U-G-H, like you're making bread, you know, the dough for bread inside the bowl. This is great. Farmhouse chic, primitive, country. Pretty much any any keyword would work with this. The wood, I'm thinking it's teak. I'm not 100% positive, but that's my best guess. And just love it. What did I pay for this? I believe I paid $4.99 for it. And again, this one is listed. I have this one quite high because it's a nice one. The thing I love about the dough bowls is a lot of times they're not symmetrical. So they're a little bit off. You can see it as I turn the bowl. It's not perfectly formed. I love organic shapes, anything that shows that it's natural from nature. Just love it, beautiful. And sometimes if you're lucky enough, you'll find the trencher bowls. And if you find an antique trencher bowl, grab it because those are in high demand. And when I go to flea markets, sometimes I see them. They almost always have damage. Years ago on my dining room table, we had a gorgeous one. It was a big one. I think I sold it at a yard sale. You know me, I sell everything not tied down, but um, I said yes to this. How could you not? So beautiful. 
This next item I am truly recommending to run comps or learn about the genre. This is a tiki candle holder. So I'm going to do that, see if they'll focus. And he is faux wood. I don't believe this is real wood, although it sounds like wood. You know, it does sound like wood, but I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking it's a faux wood meant to look like a carved wood. Tiki votive candle holder. Now this is an older one. You can see the rust inside. Most likely the rust is from rainwater. Somebody put this out in the garden, which would be beautiful. And tiki's are well collected. So when I find a carved like totem pole, when I find carved statues, especially if they're hand carved, when I find tiki mugs, I almost always pick them up. They are really, really fast moving in my store. So we shall see about this guy here. I paid $1.99 for him. And again, I believe he's listed. Are you listed? I think you're listed. Guys, I don't know how I don't remember this. I'm just like, you know, things coming in, things going out. It's in all different rooms, but um, I'm going to say it's listed and I think it should do well. All right, the next items we're gonna talk about are baseball bats. I know zero about baseball bats, but yet I have sold, not hundreds, but I have probably sold, oh man, probably at least 25 to 30 baseball bats in my time and still know zero. How could that be? <laughs> How could it be that I sell an item that I still know nothing about? Because there are so many different bats, the ages, the players, the companies that make them. But when I see a baseball bat and it seems to be something that I want to take a look at, I run a comp. I hardly ever pick up baseball bats without running a comp because I have zero knowledge. But I saw this dark one. Now this has uh, Hillerich and Bradsbury. I think that's what Bradsby, Bradsby. So H and B, this is a Louisville Slugger, Louisville Slugger 125. And it says Powerize Genuine M142. I know that I'm pretty sure is the serial number. And Mateo Alou, that is the player. So this is what it looks like. And I believe if you put into a Google search the way the company design is designed, it'll give you the general date of when that baseball bat was made. I guess you could also use the player's name and see when they played. And I put this on Instagram and said, no idea, but yet here it is and I'm selling it. So baseball bats and golf clubs. I love selling, absolutely love. They take up very little room. I just have a box downstairs. I keep them straight, you know, up and down. So very little space. Golf clubs, I put inventory numbers on because I can get confused really quickly for what club is what. But a baseball bat, fairly easy to grab, especially because the player's name is sometimes, most times on it. All right, so let's look at bat number two. All right, so here is bat number two. Make sure I'm showing it correctly. So it's H and B. And what does this say on it? DHB12, <laughs> which I don't even know what that means. And safe hit, safe hit, it looks like Mickey Mantle. So I just measure the bat. I give the measurements. I know sometimes the bat will have a number here on it, and I'm not sure what that number means. Is it the size of the bat? I don't even know. Um, so you can see, I know very little bit about bats, but I make very good money with them. So most times I'm getting a baseball bat for about 2 to $3. If it was much higher, I would really have to know what I'm doing. But because my buy-in price is so low, I'm not as concerned with having a lot of knowledge. I figure somebody is going to want the bat. And if I have a hard time selling it on eBay, I will go ahead and flip this on Facebook Marketplace. And they do quite well there. Now, right now, Facebook Marketplace is still very slow for me. But the things aren't bothering me. I have the things for sale and there's many different ways to sell bigger items. Whether you're selling on eBay, local pickup, or on a site like Facebook Marketplace, I'm, I'm all in. I've done really well on Facebook Marketplace. I have sold furniture, um, oh, electronics, speakers, musical instruments, 
you name it, I've sold it. So uh, right now, again, kind of slow. My eBay store has picked up a little bit because last time I told you guys, last time I made a video, I said my sales were super slow. Some days they're still a little slow, but uh, still making a great living flipping on eBay. All right, let's go on to the next item. Okay, this item, I know this is Santa Claus, <laughs> so we know that. He is very, very heavy. And I feel like he's made out of like cement or some kind of really heavy casted material. At first, I thought he was metal, some sort of heavy cast iron, but I don't think it's the case. The reason I picked this up is because of the way his face is painted. I'm gonna to try to zoom in on that. And he is like a roly-poly Santa. Now, I could be using that term wrong. Roly-polies might be almost like weebles where they don't sit flat. And this one does have a flat base. But for me, roly-poly should apply to this Santa also. But I picked him up especially because he's painted so cute. I paid $2.99 for him. And again, he is in my store. Okay, next item up. Ready for this craziness? A sphinx. <laughs> How good is this? All right, so I saw this sitting on the shelf and I did not notice right away that this Egyptian statue has a little bit of nose damage, needs a nose job. And I did see that before I purchased it and I said, you know what, I don't think that's that bad because this is a vintage Stainmaster piece. Now, Stainmaster, I know it to be a carpet cleaning or carpet company, I should say. They have, um, they have made carpets and carpet cleaners and carpet cleaning products. That's my knowledge. Could be wrong about all of that. But when I saw this, the thing I loved about it is this holds a votive candle in the back and then the eyes glow because the eyes are clear marbles. And I thought this was just so fun. Unfortunately, when I listed it, I did not have a tea light candle to really make it glow. I did have like a Yankee candle and I stuck it back there. It worked a little bit. I wish I had a candle today and um, I could show you how his eyes glow really bright when a candle is lit. But this is what the marking looks like. And I just thought he was great. I did pay up for him. I believe I paid $4.99, $4.99. And a lot of people collect Egyptian souvenirs, Egyptian, you know, all kinds of artifacts. And I thought somebody would want this in their collection. So I went ahead and picked it up. And it has the year on it, 1990, this was made. So true vintage. All right, the next item up I found when I was thrifting with a friend, we went to, I think, nine thrift stores. We started out at, I think, 10, 10.30 in the morning. We did not finish till 8 o'clock at night. Had a great time, and uh, he is a longtime reseller, a wealth of knowledge, so great fun that day. And this item is a puzzle box. So this is the top. As you can see, it's a hippo. That's what it looks like. And then inside, when you slide that top piece off the cover, it looks like this, and this piece comes out. And then the third piece is the box itself. And on the back, it is signed, and what does that say? Mahogany Cherry, and it has the person's name, which of course I don't have my glasses here, so you're just gonna have to trust me, there's a name back there, Lewis somebody. I, don't, I can't even see what that says. It's very light in pen. I'll write the name on the screen if I remember. I love puzzle boxes. So this one is handmade. And what did I pay for this? I don't remember what I paid for this, to be truthful. We shopped all over the place. We went all the way up to Shillington, I think was the furthest, which was probably about an hour away, and all the way to Lancaster. So we were just all over the place. Anytime he said, do you want to go to this one? I'm like, yep, you can't out shop me. So great time. That's one of my favorite things to do. You would think with all this thrifting and going to flea markets on a day off, I wouldn't want to do that. I so want to do that. We filled the car. So nothing like thrifting with a good friend and puzzle box. All right. All right, we have one more piece and then we're gonna do a couple of pairs of shoes. I did show this gorgeous platter on Instagram. Thrilled to find this. This is Marilyn Stover and she is a potter. 
Now, right now on eBay, that she has three pieces. Well, it's not hers. People are selling. Other sellers have three different pieces and they have not sold. But I see a lot of solds when I do comps in Google. Even if I saw zero solds, I would still pick this up. First of all, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So as you can see, it is glazed, hand painted. It is handmade. It's a piece of pottery. And second of all, it's an oyster plate. You can differentiate an oyster plate from a deviled egg plate or another plate by the size of the indentations. So that is what that looks like. I would also like to see maybe half pears. You know when they do the pear in chocolate sauce? I love that dessert. Is it just called pears in chocolate sauce? I feel like there's probably a fancy French name to that. Pears, pears in chocolate sauce, and now I want that. Anyway, I think if you're having a fancy dinner, that would be beautiful too. Like, like poached pears with a drizzle of chocolate sauce. Yum. But um, anyway, what did I pay for this? Hmm, I think I paid $1.99. In, on Instagram, I said I paid $2.99, but I, I checked back and it was $1.99. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Her work is beautiful. I think her husband or her partner is also a potter. So uh, when I get free time, I'm going to be researching them a little bit more. I think they're local. I think Pennsylvania, but it could be Delaware. Could be Delaware. Not sure. All right, let's keep going. All right, the first pair of shoes, very unusual. I'm going to show them to you first. Right now they're stuffed with a tissue paper. They are all cleaned with the Martin's balsam that I use on leather. And when I saw these in Goodwill, I knew that they were very special. The quality of the leather and the workmanship is just beautiful. You know me, I love beautiful workmanship. And when I saw these, the stitching, everything is perfection but I didn't know who these were attributed to. There's no marking inside, there's no size inside, and I said, wow, if I get these, this is gonna be a rabbit hole. But I put them on Instagram, and a couple of you realized these are Ricardo Medina Botin boots. And sure enough, I Googled that, and his work came up, and these are quite expensive new. If I remember correctly, at least a couple of hundred dollars a pair, I'm not sure if these are all custom made for the owner buying them or if they are made, you know, a certain amount are made, a limited edition maybe, and made in different sizes. Still haven't clarified that. For my eBay listing, I just gave the measurement of the sole and then the inside of the shoe. But just beautiful. They are um, fashioned after a tribal or a Native American style. So that is what Roberto Medina does, his work. I believe he is crafting in Mexico. Not exactly sure about that. And I have them listed in my store for $149. I will report back on Instagram if these sell because these are such an interesting find. I could not run comps. I couldn't, it's something I just put in my cart. Love to do that. And I'm almost thinking that if they were women's and my size, I don't know. I want to think I would hold on to them and wear them. I want to be this cool, but in reality, I'm really not. But I thought these were great. So Roberto Medina Botin, B-O-T-I-N, I think, boots. Really, really wonderful find. Okay, and the last pair of shoes we're going to talk about are really sneakers. And this is the sneaker. Now, as you can see, they are Nike Air Force Ones. Really love this red and white with the gold swoosh. And I wasn't quite sure what I had because this sneaker does not have the Nike tag inside with the identifying number. So I was like, what's up with these sneakers? No size found. So that's a thing in itself. I'm not quite sure if the inner sole, I'm going to pull it out actually, is the original. It does have the same branding on it. So I'm going to show you that. But to me, this seems like a different inner sole because it's a little bit short of the footbed inside. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. But I did research and a couple of you, again on Instagram, love my Instagram family, helped me out, identify these as shoes that were part of the Nike Lab exhibition in Shanghai, China. 
and Nike was looking for a photographer to capture the impact that Nike Air Force Ones has had on the youth basketball community, basketball youth community, one of those in China. And they looked at the 13th witness, that is the photographer, his work, and he was commissioned and got the exhibition in the Nike Lab Shanghai. So that's all I know about it. I hope I got all of that correct. I will insert a few photos from that exhibition here in the video so you guys can take a look at it. These are not listed. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with these sneakers. I did reach out to a couple of the sneaker experts I know, Clutch Swag on Instagram. If you're not following Clutch Swag, you should be. He is just a gem. I love his knowledge. Very nice person, really helpful in the community. And I also reached out to Hustle and Hacks Glenn and the Hustle Bee Ken. But I am looking to see if I can find any information of what I should list this sneaker as. I think it's like a collector sneaker. So if you are collecting Nike or know somebody who collects Nike, if you want to just let them know that I'm showing this shoe in this video, that would be a great help if they want to leave a comment down below. Or if you yourself know anything about this sneaker, because I am zero knowledge on Nikes. I usually pick up Nikes. I go by the inner tag. I put the number in. It comes up. I copy and paste. That is my knowledge. So all I know is Nike Air Force One, and the 13th witness is the man who is the photographer that did the work, did the exhibition for Nike Lab in China. All right, so that is the wealth of all of my information, my great knowledge, and I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please hit that like and subscribe button and go out and get what's yours.